there is a mysterious cycle in human events. To some generations, much is given. Of other generations, much is expected. This generation of Americans has a rendezvous with destiny. Those words, spoken by Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1936, stand as a precursor to the actions of countless men and women who served in World War II. For veteran Bob Blegan, the words are a reminder of his naval service, both at Normandy and in the Pacific, during those days of strife and death. There were days, you know, when, when we'd be up on top of the whole world and look out forever, and the next minute, you're at the bottom of this thing, and you look around and there's water all around you. I was ordered to take command of an LCI. I had never handled such a ship. I had never stood in command and control of a ship underway. That LCI, or Landing Craft Infantry, became Bob's home throughout the war. It was a home that in fact helped define the experience for thousands of soldiers during World War II. You hear about the bruising battleships and the classy cruisers and the awesome aircraft carriers and the silent submarines and the dashing destroyers, but you don't hear about the LCI. Yet if you read a lot of the history books, the invasions were predicated on the number of landing craft that they had. And that was the case on D-Day, when the Allies stormed Normandy Beach, Bob's LCI hit the sand the evening of the first day. After the, the beach had settled down, we would go in on a high tide with a load, dry out. The water wouldn't run completely out there. We'd be sitting on dry land. Trucks would come alongside and up the ramp, unload us, and this is bulk cargo now, and go off, and we'd wait for the next high tide and go out and pick another ship. The average age of the crew, it was this kind of a skeleton crew by then, was 20 years old. That's the average. Uh -huh. The average age of the officers was 22. If you were 25 year old, you were probably called the old man. In the decades since the end of the Second World War, technologies have evolved and changed, and the LCIs have become a footnote in the history books. Now, one group is trying to change that. They're trying to create a floating museum out of one of the only landing craft left in existence. This is LCI 713. At the end of World War II, there was 6,000 ships thereabouts in the, in the Navy's arsenal. 3,000 of those were amphibious forces ships, or, which is what we have. And of those 3,000, there are only two that are on the National Historic Registry. So there's none left and it, uh, it preserves a, a very important part of history that we're missing. To actually see and feel and touch what they did is vitally important to me. That you, can't, you can't just uh, visualize it reading it from a book. So we either use what was in a blueprint or we use what's in photographs or interior photographs. We want to, be this, we want to make this as authentic as possible. Today, Bob has traveled from Salt Lake City to Swan Island in Portland, Oregon to put that authenticity to the test, alongside fellow veterans who served on LCIs. Oh my, those doors are big. This is great, this feels good. It's been 70 years since any of these men have set foot on a landing craft and the memories flood back as they shared their stories of service and the men they lost on the beaches of another time. For most visitors, LCI 713 is a piece of American history. For these men, it's a piece of their personal history. It's the best day I've had in probably almost 70 years. It's been a long time, and this was a great treat. And the people I've met are very, very interesting and rewarding to me. I completely broke down in tears. That was my reaction. I don't know why, but I just wept just to see an LCI. That's the way it hit me, boom. <laughs> LCI 713 is open to the public by appointment, and the museum is looking to improve the experience while keeping the boat floating. As an entirely volunteer organization, the Amphibious Forces Memorial Museum looks to the public for financial help to keep this piece of history alive. Well, in order to get our ship 
fully operational, it needs a new uh, dry, a major dry docking and some hull repair work to the tune of about a million dollars. Compared to what's required for other naval projects, it's a pretty small amount. Donations can be made at amphibiousforces.org as our veteran friends look back on their service in the days of the greatest generation. They also look to the future and how their sacrifice, their rendezvous with destiny, continues to resonate today. Even after everything they accomplished for the nation and the world, they still feel that they are far from the last great American generation. I heard a lot of these people, they couldn't do it, but we did. They would do it if they had to. I think the American kids today, some of them are awfully sharp. I had a friend that told me, he said, boy, that LCI is sure ugly, isn't it? And my response to him was, Lou, uh, yes, they might be, but they're sort of like the army mule. They did a job that nobody else could do. I'd like to see this ship stay so people could see what we were in and what we, what we did. And this would make a real unique floating museum. If we don't learn our lessons from World War II, we're going to be right back into another world war again. And, and, and that's what we're all about. We're about teaching some of those lessons. You know, maybe a small piece of it, but it's a very important piece. Roosevelt called them to greatness. History dictated their course. Now all of us can take part in their legacy, so long as we remember the lessons of their sacrifice. From Swan Island, I'm Terry Wood.